So now let's look at the history of PCI. How did PCI come about? And like, what is the history behind it, right? So that is what we are going to look at. So uh, we looked at all these data breaches, right? Target, Adobe, uh, British Airways. So when these, be, before I even get into that, uh, the credit card or debit card that you have, uh, you know, it will have a Visa or MasterCard on it. Or if you have uh, like American Express, American Express, uh, but your card that has Visa or Master uh, is probably issued by your bank, maybe Bank of America, uh, Chase Bank, or all these banks. So my question is, who owns these cards? Is it Chase Bank who issued it to you or Visa? like the label visa on it or the, like the brand visa on it who is the real owner of the card and what do i mean by who is the real owner of the card when there's a data breach and attackers steal money from your card you're obviously going to go back to the bank and the bank is going to refund your money back to you right now who is really going to incur that loss is it the bank or visa or master or if you're using american express or American Express or uh, Discover. Um, anybody want to give it a shot? I mean, except people from the class, from the PCI class. Uh, anybody want to maybe give it a shot? Who owns the card, right? And who is going to incur the loss if somebody takes your card, use it for some, you know, uh, like malicious activities, i.e., stealing your money or use it to buy something? And now there is maybe like a two thousand uh, uh, dollar, you know, lost on your card. You are going to file claims, so the bank is going to refund your money back to you, obviously. But who really lost that two thousand dollars? Is it your bank or Visa or Mastercard? Anybody want to give it a shot? Okay, I have two hands raised. Let me see. Uh, Okay, Lauren, go ahead. Hi, yeah, Doctor. So I don't so well, I, I think it's the bank because then you go to the bank and then the bank is going to refund your money and all that. So Okay. Maybe it's for me, I think it's the bank that, you know, runs at a loss. Okay. What about you, Kofi? Um, I agree partly with what um, she just said, but I think eventually the risk will be handled by the by the actual company Visa. Maybe they'll split it, but eventually I think it will get to Visa or American Express. Okay. Anybody else want to give it a shot? All right. So. Uh, your credit card or your debit card. If so, I'll talk about uh, American Express and Discover later. But your card, we, we, we're just talking about uh, Master and Visa, right? Uh, if you have a card from Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, uh, all these banks, when they issue you a card, uh, it's going to have Visa or Master on it. Now, who owns the money on the card? It's not your bank, it's the card brand. So it's Visa or Master. And if it's from uh, American Express, it's American Express. If it's like a Macy's card issued, you know, through American Express or Delta card issued with American Express logo on it, it means the card actually belongs to American Express, right? So whoever logo is on there, it means they are the ones uh, who actually owns the card and they are the ones who are making the payments on your bank's behalf. Okay, so if there is a loss, uh, your bank is going to give you the money, obviously. And even like that refund, necessarily, you, like your bank is going to process it, but the money actually comes from Visa and Master, right? It's not necessarily your bank. Although your bank is going to also suffer some bruises, <laughs> but the actual cost goes to the card brands. So if you were the card brand, uh, what, what, like, what are you going to do to make sure that your, whoever is accepting your card 
you know, is keeping it in a safer way. That way attackers wouldn't have their hands on. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So if you are going to be the one losing, then you have to make sure whoever is accepting your card for payments, before you allow them to accept your card for payments, they have to agree that they are going to follow some you know, standards that are set by you. Uh, if they decide not to follow those standards, then you're also not going to allow them to accept your card, right? So that is where standards, when it comes to payment cards, or when it comes to using credit and debit cards come into play. Because when there is a loss, who suffers and whoever is suffering will have to make sure they have some standards in place. So uh, if even if these standards are in place and you are following those standards by the T and there is still a loss, then at least you did your due diligence. Okay. So uh, we are getting into, I think there are some hands raised. Uh, go ahead, Kofi. Or like that was the old uh, Kofi and Lawrence still have their hands raised. Sorry, I think it's from the previous from, from uh, the previous ask. one. Okay, yeah. then Dr. I'm Dr. just going to go here. Uh, Doctor Du. Yes, go ahead, Lauren. Yes. So right. So if this, if the, if these breaches occur, mm -hmm. who's to blame? Is it the bank? For not keeping, like not being, you know, um, is it the bank because they didn't keep the PII of the the, the clients well, or is is Visa's fault because they had an issue with the um, PIIs? Okay, so if there is a breach, right, wherever the breach occurred is the fault of that uh, merchant. So let's say you go to Walmart you make some purchase. Once you swipe your card, uh, some of your card data is stored you know, on their service, right? If there is a breach uh, at Walmart and the attackers are, are like, they are able to steal customer's card information, it's not the fault of the bank or the fault of the card uh, owners. It's the fault of uh, Walmart because they didn't keep the card information they collected safe. Right. So that is why these card brands, <clears throat> they have their own standards that they set for these banks, uh, for banks, one, and also for merchants. So merchants here, when I say merchants, I'm referring to any company uh, that accepts credit card or debit card for payments. Right. So if you are an entity that accepts credit card or debit card for payments, uh, because you are accepting credit card and debit card data, you have the obligation of keeping that information safe. And we cannot leave it like the card brands, they cannot leave it to these uh, various companies to come up with their own ways of protecting uh, the card data. So they have the card brands. Uh, so when I, like when I talk about card brands, I'm referring to uh, the major global card brands, right? So I'm referring to American Express, Discover, JCB, MasterCard, and Visa, right? And for Visa, we have Visa Europe and Visa Inc. for, Amer for North America, right? So these card brands, uh, it is their cards that or any company that is accepting debit or credit card, you'll be accepting one of these cards, right? So these card brands, they cannot leave it to the company like these various companies to come up with their own standards of how they are going to protect the card, you know, data, because ultimately is it their, like it is their card and they have the ultimate responsibility of making sure it is safe. But once uh, it is in the hands of a different entity, they can't really control what the entity does, but they could. And how can they do that is by setting up standards of how they are supposed to keep a uh, card data so these card brands they are not going to set standards for how to manage your whole it infrastructure or how to protect yourself when it comes to cyber security or information security but there are certain standards for you on how you are going to keep uh, safe the card the card information that you are collecting from uh, customers who are holding their card i hope that makes sense to everybody so 
these card companies until 2006, they had their own individual standards, right? So American Express had their own standards, Discover had their own standards. And what I mean by their own standards is they had their own standards of how uh, merchants or companies that are accepting their card should keep the card data to make it safe, right? So they had their own list of things you are supposed to do. So A, may protect card holder in this way, encrypt uh, card holder data when you are transferring it from point A to point B, is that like a whole list? And all of them had their different standards, right? So Discover had their own, JCB had their own, MasterCard had their own, Visa had their own standards, right? And these were the standards that they were using to protect, to make sure that whoever is accepting. So before a company uh, is allowed to accept Visa, Master, American Express, and all these cards, they have to sign an agreement with these card brands, right? That yes, I will stay in compliance. I'll follow your standards that you've set forth for me to follow. If they don't follow, then you know they wouldn't be allowed to accept uh, these card brands, right? So these companies, so or any company that accepts payment cards, they have to follow the different types of uh, uh, standards from American Express, Discover, JCB. So imagine if you're a, uh, maybe like Walmart or some you know shop, small or small to medium company somewhere, and you know you are trying to run your business, and at the same time you are accepting debits and credit cards from all these card uh, brands and you have to follow each of these individually. Uh, I mean, that, that was like a big, you know, headache, right? Even now with one standard, uh, it's still a big headache, but you can imagine that time, uh, that was kind of like a big headache, but likely for them, uh, data breaches in terms of PCI uh, or a payment card was not as frequent and it wasn't, uh, as uh, sophisticated as today, right? But even that time, it was still like a big problem and they had to follow all these standards, right? So I hope everybody is getting the idea behind. So we are gradually building, uh, we are gradually building the, uh, like the blocks for you to understand how PCI came into being and where it came from and the ideology behind it from the payment, uh, from the card owners and also from merchants, right? So, and also from like the perspective of banks who are also issuing uh, cards for these card brands, okay? So uh, we are going to look at the history, like how P PCI SSE came to be, right? But now we've set the foundation for that. So everybody understands why uh, there were like why these card brands came up with standards for companies that wants to accept their cards to follow. Because if there are no standards, then everybody will be doing their own thing. And if something happens, you can't really blame anybody because you didn't give them any standards to follow. So if I'm doing my own thing, you are doing your own thing and something happens, you know, there's no uniform uh, standard, right? So you can't really fault these companies if they are trying their best. Right? But if there are set uh, standards and they don't follow them, you know, obviously uh, you can hold them, hold your feet to the fire. So in 2006, right, in 2006, these card uh, brands or these major card brands, they came together and decided to form uh, an LLC or a company that is called PCI SSC, right? And the idea behind this was that they wanted to unify all their standards to make it one. So they wanted to unify all their standards to make it one. But then if they unified all their standards, who among the five was going to do the day-to-day -day, uh, training and regulation of these standards and doing research within the industry to come up with you know, proper standards and stuff. So they, you know what, okay, let's set up a different entity outside us that is going to handle this for us, right? So in 2006, uh, American Express, Discover, JCB, International, uh, MasterCard, and Visa, 
So when I say Visa, I'm, I'm uh, including Visa Europe and Visa Inc. And if you don't know there's Visa Europe and Visa Inc, then don't worry about it, just Visa. Uh, so these card brands, these major card brands, uh, global card brands, uh, they are the founding fathers of PCI SSC. And PCI SSC, the full meaning of PCI SSC is Payment Card Industry Security Standard Council, right? It's an LLC you know, uh, uh, formed, and they are based in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, so the PCI SSE was formed by these five entities, and they all have equal say in PCI, but PCI is run by, you know, people that they've employed uh, who are running and doing everything else within PCI to come up with the standards and the different types of security standards that they have and to, they are the ones who do the training. Uh, they are the ones who certify companies to do audits or assessments uh, for uh, these card brands, okay? So the founding fathers, they all have equal share uh, and also for the governance of PCI SSC, okay? So now everybody understands uh, where, so let's, when we understand what PCI SSC is, then we can jump into the different security standards that includes PCI DSS. Okay, so any questions so far or everybody's good? All right, if everybody's good, then let's move on. So uh, the goal or the main duty of the PCI Council uh, is to one, uh, train or create awareness about the standards uh, for uh, keeping card data safe. And they are also the ones who come up with the standards, right? by doing industry research and uh, 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 doing like, uh, so they are, like their industry research uh, is not something that they do in isolation. They have like people like uh, Arrhythmus Inc or companies like Arrhythmus Inc and other companies contributing to uh, what they think is supposed to uh, be added to what they have in terms of their, like their old uh, standards, right? So, they are the ones who also qualify uh, companies to become assessors or auditors. Uh, but one thing that they do not do is they are not the ones who will punish any company that does not follow the standard. Although they are the ones who create the standard, but uh, punishment for not following the standard is done, is done by the card brands. Okay. So uh, they have an executive uh, committee that has a representative from all these card brands or the founding fathers. Uh, and the enforcement of PCI standards and determination of non-compliance is carried out by the individual card brands, not by PCI, right? So PCI, they will do like they are the ones who come up with the standards, example, PCI DSS uh, and all other standards. Uh, they will do the education of it and they will do awareness training. But if a company is found to be non-compliance, uh, they will suffer the punishment from the owners of PCI SSC because PCI SSC doesn't uh, issue any card, right? Uh, the like the people who issue the cards are the card brands, and they they might issue it individually or through uh, the company through banks or uh, different outlets. Okay. So I just talked about what PCI SSC is supposed to do. Uh, they are a global organization. Anything that has to do with cardholder data security uh, is PCI SSC. So now they are like the front for uh, cardholder data protection uh, across the globe. And the card brands, you know, they are kind of uh, uh, at the backside, right? You know, so they only have to come in when there is a non-compliance issue or if there is some uh, conflicting uh, issues, then they'll come in. Now still, uh, although there are P like PCI SSC is there with their standards, right? That everybody has to follow. But uh, still when you go deep into PCI, there are certain uh, little issues and not issues, but there are like little things that the different card brands also still will require, right? Uh, an example is how they classify uh, companies in terms of their levels 
uh, all that like different card brands have different level like different classifications but all that is addressed in uh, a standard like pci dss right if you are you know if you get into any pci dss training uh whatever training and if whoever is training you really knows the inside and out they will take you through all those areas and uh, it's pretty fun right so uh we've talked about like the role of pci ssc and the role of the card brands right so we are just going to go forward and look at some of the security standards